Okay, first worksheet. So this is one of three worksheets. The title using trig to find angles. So remember your trig. You got three trig ratios. Sine, cosine, tangent. You got to remember Sokatoa. 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 Okay, check it out. Here's the visual. So you got a triangle. This triangle is a 90 degree. So we got the 90 right here. If you've got a 90 degree triangle, there's three sides. Opposite of the 90, this side's the hypotenuse. Which lights up. This side that is purple, that's the angle we're looking at. And I've got it opened up to like 74 degrees. So I can change that angle. I can shrink it down to 55, whatever. So this angle is where we're going from. If this angle is where you're going from, you go across the way, and this leg is the opposite leg. So there's two legs, a medium leg and a short leg. The longest of the three sides is the hypotenuse. Now, let's do this. Everybody, okay, let's, let me see if I can get it as close as I can to 70. Okay, 70 degrees. So on your calculator, everybody punch in oh okay there we go that's gonna be close enough so that's close to 70 degrees so on your calculator first of all let's go into the settings so hit the home button and go in let's just okay let's do a new document so let's start with the brand new document hit one and don't save any changes and add a calculator now we got a fresh start go home let's make sure your settings are in degrees so if you hit five go into the second one the document settings now make sure the second one down make sure your angle is in degrees and not radians because it's going to be the radians or degrees and if it's in radians you're going to get every answer wrong so it's got to be in degrees make sure you do that for the test double check hit make the default because some kids are changing them to jack you up setting booby traps now just go back to four four will take you to your current document okay now your trig left of seven everybody pull up the trig hit hit sign if we hit sign of that 70 degree angle and hit enter okay sign of 70 degrees is always gonna give you a decimal always 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 a decimal now this decimal point oh nine or point nine three nine six now you need to understand what the visual is so in trig so let's go back to this visual Eyeballs on the board. Jackie. Now, let's take out this triangle. If we do sine, sine was the so. So the O is the opposite and the H is the hypotenuse. It's going to compare the opposite to the hypotenuse. So if I click on sine, it's going to make that comparison. It's going to swing the opposite over. Compared to the hypotenuse, look. That 0.94 means it's like 94% of the hypotenuse. So this trig tells you on your calculator, it says 0.93969. That means that the opposite, if we change this to a percent, move the decimal over twice, the opposite is 94% of the hypotenuse. If you look at, so if I reset this, if you look at the cosine, cosine is ka and that's the adjacent compared to the hypotenuse so the adjacent is this short one the adjacent is not even going to be half of the hypotenuse so if I click on cosine it swings up stacks them on top of each other cosine is like 0.34 so that means it's like 34 percent of the hypotenuse so now let's look at tangent if we do tangent tangent is toa it's going to compare the opposite with the adjacent so if we swing the opposite onto the adjacent what's it going to be it's way longer than the adjacent so if you do tangent of 70 degrees you get like 
2.755. That means it's 275% of the adjacent. So it's way bigger. It's almost three times bigger. Now, your calculator has every one of these angles programmed. No matter what angle I choose, if I do a small 17 degree angle, now I can change the size of this triangle. I can make the base quite a bit longer. That makes the hypotenuse longer. Kind of stretches the height of it. Everything changes. But the trig's going to stay the same. So look at this. I've got it close to 17 degrees. If I hit sine, it's going to compare the opposite to the hypotenuse. And that is going to be like 30%. And if I shrink it down, I keep the angle the same, but I shrink it way down. If I hit sign again, it's still going to only be like 30%. So the size of the triangle is irrelevant. All that matters is the angle. So I change the angle. The size is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Now here's what we need to do. So look at you got let's look at number one and number two. So you got to use trig to find angles. All right. So here's your first move. Let me erase. Oh, it's kind of blurry. You can't see, but look on your paper. Here we go. First thing you got to mark it up. Always find the hypotenuse first. So here's your 90. If you go opposite the 90, this piece is your hypotenuse. And the question marks where they want to draw your eyes. So right here, this angle, if you go straight across, that piece is going to be the opposite. So find the hypotenuse first and then the opposite. And that means this one has to be adjacent. Okay, now you have three trig ratios to choose from. You need to choose the one that's going to use 17 and 15. Don't use this. This is kind of irrelevant. We're not even going to worry about this. We're going to look at the 17, and we are going to look at the 15. So I need to use the trig that uses H with A. And this uses O with H. This uses A with H. This uses O with A. So you've got to use cosine. So your trig is knowing which of the three to use. We are going to use cosine. We're going cosine from unknown, but the ratio is going to be this. I'm going to put the A on top, and that's 15, and I'm going to put the H on bottom, and that's 17. No, oh, 16. All right, okay, so this guy is a 16. Thank you very much. Now, we're done. Your trig is done. From here on out, it's, it's kind of algebra. And here's what you need to understand. Trig is, has nothing to do with arithmetic. There is no times, there is no plus, there is no minus, there is no divide. Caitlin, trig. All trig is doing is comparing two sides of a triangle. There is no divide, no times, no plus, there is nothing. So trig is kind of weird to undo. So look at this guy right here. If you have an algebraic that's completely arithmetic, if you have this, if you have 2x equals 8, and you want to solve for x, how do you undo it? You undo times. What's going on is times. So you undo times by divide. You divide by 2, divide by 2, you get x equals 4. Now trig, how you undo trig is totally different. So here's, this is your x. The question mark is the x. Now, I want to undo the trig. I want x all by itself. So just like this, 2x equals 4. You want x by itself. you got to ditch the 2. 2 is easy to ditch because it's timesing 2x. So you undo times by divide. Divide 2, divide 2, 
x equals 4. That idea is called inverse. Inverse of times is divide. Inverse of add is subtract. Inverse is like undoing. Now how you inverse trig is got to be totally done by the calculator. You cannot do it with your pencil paper calculation. So to ditch the cosine, this is not cosine times x. It is not times. So you do not divide by cosine, divide by cosine. Trig is just comparing two sides of a triangle. So inverse, you do this. Cosine to the negative 1. Now that's new, that's brand new, it's kind of weird. But it's nothing you do. This is all done on the calculator. So inverse cosine kills cosine. And you've got to inverse cosine on this side. And this is all done on a calculator. So if you pull your calculator up, if you hit that trig button, oh, let me escape this. If you hit the trig button, here's all your trig options. Now the ones on top, that's going forward. These ones on bottom with the negative 1 to the exponent, that's inversing, that's undoing. So I'm going to hit cosine to the negative 1. And then you type in your fraction. So we're going to type in 16 over 17. Okay, and that will give you the angle. So this angle is like 19.74. So now if we go here, they want you to round it to the nearest degree. So for your work, I want to see this. I want to see cosine of x equals 16 over 17. I've got to know what trig you're using. You've To get credit, you've got to show me what trig you're using. And then I want to see this. Then I've got to see that you're using the inverse. So now you cosine inverse this side, cosine inverse this side, and this is it. You hit cosine inverse, and it will tell you the degree. And that degree was 9. So we're going to round it to the nearest degree. So that 7 is going to push 19 up to 20. So we'll call this 20 degrees. So that angle right there is a 20 degree angle. Okay, so let's do one more. Let's look at number 2. So if you look at number 2, they're going to give you some specs of the triangle. You could use Pythagorean theorem to find this third side. But we don't need to. So let's mark it up. Here's your 90. This 90 points to the hypotenuse. This side right here is the hypotenuse. Find that one first. Now your angle is right here. So you go across the street from the angle. This side is the opposite. Then this side is going to be your adjacent. Now you got to figure out which trig you're going to use. So, ka, or toa. Hayden? Toa? Why toa? Yeah, we don't know what this is. So do not use H. So don't use that guy, don't use that guy. So you're going to use the O and the A. Very good. So here we go. Your work's got to be this. you got to tell me what trig you're using. Tangent from X equals. Now you got to put the O on top. So that's 13 over 41. Okay, now we're going to go backwards. We're going to solve for x, so we've got to ditch the trig. And the only way you ditch the trig is you inverse it. So go tangent, inverse, that kills that. So you got x all by itself. But you got to do it to both sides. So you got to inverse tangent on this side. And that is only done on the calculator. So inverse tangent of 13 of over 41. Go trig, inverse tangent. 13 divided by 41, and that will give you the angle, and the angle is 17.59 degrees. So that 5 is going to push it up to 18 degrees. So x equals an 18 degree angle. And this concludes our portion. This is worksheet number 1. Work hard, be good.